It's uh, October 2010, when I pulled up to my parents' house on Mount Hay Drive, it's North San Diego. I looked at the familiar yellow stucco house with brown trim, a 1950s tract home that had been trying and failing to show its individuality for half a century. It was my parents' home, the one place in the world that I felt safe, comfortable, and grounded. This time, I wouldn't be talking about sports and guy stuff with my dad or eating spaghetti and meatballs made from scratch and discussing how I was feeling with my mom. I was here to clear out my father's office. My mom had been living there alone since my dad died in 2005. She had just moved out because dementia had robbed her of her ability to take care of herself. The house was on the market, and it was, I couldn't avoid my duty any longer. I opened up the front door that had been painted with various shades of brown so many times. I swear, it was all paint. The original wood had long since dissolved into history. It was cheaper to paint it than to fix it. I remember when my dad and I had first passed through that door in January 1969. I was 14. We had just returned from dad's last army assignment in Japan and needed a house. The year before, we held a family meeting in Japan to decide where we'd live. And everybody, well, but me, voted for San Diego. I wanted Denver. Ironically, I'm the only one still living in San Diego, so there. <laughs> I passed into the living room, turned the corner down the long, narrow hall, where my two younger brothers and I had played ninjas, climbing like monkeys up the wall. I used to scare the shit out of my mother by dropping down on her. <laughs> then I turned into my dad's office. It still smelled like brill cream and aqua velva. Think great-grandfathers. The office was arranged just as he had left it. His padre cap hung on, on the wall just up in the right of his desk. He wore it on the first day he took me to the Padre series in Jack Murphy Stadium. They got rid of it. It kills me. His calendar re uh, remained in the center of his desk, still bearing notations like water the grass, get a haircut, Packed for the hospital. It was the last thing he ever wrote. On the walls were dozens of framed certificates. I saw his 12 outstanding military service awards arranged in order of date received. He had a distinguished 22-year Army career, including training CIA agents. There was an award for the work he did to save his church's finances and positioned dead center was a San Diego City Council proclamation that honored him for 50 years of umpiring and named a girls' softball field after him. He had umpired every level of men's and women's baseball and softball for 55 years. When he went to games, he, wouldn't, he would root for the umpires, <laughs> pointing out how they were positioned and explaining each call. Friends would ask, what's your favorite team? We would say the umps. We got a lot of puzzled looks. My mom had her own section. She had a number of awards for her work in the Sunday school and working with the homeless. Her favorite was the church's Quiet Angel Award. There wasn't a person in a 10 block radius that hadn't been fed, consoled, or given some of her homespun advice. Children's trophies sat on every available space covered in dust. After I moved out, for some strange reason, my dad restored my wrestling and bowling trophies. On the top shelf was my Las Vegas Marathon Completion Medal that I had given to my dad when he was in the hospital for the last time. I checked the answering machine. You reach the Christian family. Leave your name, number, and a brief message, and we'll get right back to you, my dad said. He used his stern but friendly, official-sounding voice. I hadn't heard his voice in five years. My reflex was to respond to him. His voice was comforting, and I really wanted him to be there. For the last five years, I would buried my feelings of loss so I could take care of my mom. Hearing his voice brought out the sadness that I'd been holding inside. Stop procrastinating, I told myself. Time to get to it. My father was a meticulous record keeper. There were boxes and boxes of files filled with every bill, repair manual, school certificate, picture and award for the last five decades. These were the artifacts of my parents' lives. It would be like an archaeological dig, sorting and prioritizing each item. The office had been the center of activity in the house. 
It was my younger brother's room first, until he got married and joined the Air Force in 1975. I remember when he came in through the window and my mom caught him way after curfew. I was laughing out, I was just busting out laughing. I heard him from down the hall, trying to weasel out of getting into trouble. This was where my dad had a very awkward version of the talk with me. He showed me a hot dog, literally, and his fingers, and he said, doing this will give you diseases that can make you go blind or worse. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, but it made hot dog and bean Thursdays really awkward. <laughs> I'd come here after my father's death. It was the first place I had come, where he had a long list of procedures that needed to be followed, where to get the death certificate, social security office number, and how to contact the U.S. Army burial procedure and liaison office. I think he knew his health was failing and he wanted me, he wanted to make sure that his final arrangements were taken care of properly. It was a statement of trust. Any possibility of objectivity passed with the first set of pictures of the 1966 Kumba Station Stars, the baseball team my brother and I played on and my dad coached. The next file was my parents' wedding picture from the 4th of July. 1949. The story goes, when they kissed, fireworks went off. My brother said they were just bragging about the sex that night. <laughs> Man, this was going to take a while. Every folder was a novel, every picture a short story, every document a poem. Oops. My sister-in-law, Cheryl, was going to scan the best pictures and the most important documents. I had to choose what to give her. I didn't feel qualified to judge what parts of my parents' lives were important and which weren't. I worked for four days in that room full of history until I boiled it down to two fucking boxes. I threw out all the bills, manuals, accounting, and military records first. That was easy. Then I started looking at the awards and pictures. I had a debate in my head with each item. Do, these, do I know these people, this place? Is it important to anybody in my family? Is there a story to be told here? This debate got exhausting. After three days, I felt the pressure to complete my task and started tossing more and more items into the black trash bag. These would be recycled or just ground under tons of garbage. I felt guilty. Did I put all the important events and accomplishments of the two most important people in my life in those two boxes? I just stared at the two boxes and piles and piles of black trash bags. I was tired. I was tired of being reminded that my dad was dead. I was sick and tired of watching my mom waste, in fr in front, waste away in front of my eyes. I did make up a little box of things I knew my mom would want. I included the picture of them with their dog, Skipper, a softball sign by the city council members, and his Padre hat. And then I drove up to Escondido to my mom's assisted living community. She was glad to see me and the box I had saved for her. We had spent hours going through it and telling stories. Her day-to-day -day memory was shot, but she can remember yesterday, like the past, like it was yesterday. When it was time for me to go, we hugged, and she whispered in my ear, "Hun," she always called me "Hun." Don't worry, his stories will always be in your heart. You won't lose them. My mom was pretty smart for a high school dropout with dementia. My mom died in 2018. A year later, I got a USB drive from Cheryl. She had scanned the contents of the two boxes and a lot more. I held the drive in my hand. It seemed so small and cold. Yet in that little piece of technology was a library of reminders of the stories of my family's history. I had lost my parents and my home, but not the stories. Everything was right here in my hand. After dealing with my parents' estate, I'd gone on a frenzy of scanning pictures and documents. I started writing down all the stories that I could remember and checking details with every member of my family. Now, in a fire safe in my office, are two flash drives, my parents and mine. Mom was right. It's about saving the stories that keep our loved ones alive in our hearts. Thanks. Matthew Christian, sir. Matthew.